Hey everybody, welcome to Nation. My name is Jersey and you are here. You have found one of the top 10 best window cleaning podcasts hosted by a guy named Jersey in the world. You are here. You found it. Congratulations. First and foremost, thanks for checking us out. Um, if you are a first time viewer or listener, what's up? Glad that you uh, stopped by. Hopefully you find it tolerable enough that you want to go back and watch a few of the other episodes. We have done six straight months of podcasts, so you are, you got tons of stuff to follow up on. Most of them aren't even terrible, so go ahead, watch as much as you can, comment, thumbs up, subscribe, do all that good stuff that all the cliche guys talk about, but definitely do that. And if you are part of the nation, the cool kids the people who come and watch or listen every single week what is up it is because of you that we keep doing this and thank you thank you thank you thank you for all the kind words texting emails all that stuff you guys send and the comments down below on uh, youtube also in the facebook lives definitely appreciate it it's just amazing thank you guys um, if you want to shoot me a text, tell me uh, my show sucks or it's cool or whatever, uh, 862-312-2026, and I am a sales rep for Window Cleaning Resource. So even better, if you need to get any gear or ask questions about supplies or anything, please, please, please give me a call. Let me put your order in. That would be amazing. Again, 862-312-2026. Shoot me a text. No matter how big or how small. Put all your orders in through me. All of them. Because I would love that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I also have some shout outs to do uh, for a few people. First off, Eric Johnson. Uh, Mr. Good Looking Green. You get it, right? Yeah. <laughs> Jason Thomas. Uh, you're always giving me crap and I love it. Thank you for uh, uh, always commenting and being there. Like Every single episode he's on there saying something. So I very much appreciate it. Either way, uh, Tradman, subscribe to him. If you haven't, check out Trad, T-R-A-D, hyphen, uh, man, I mean, just search him, search him on YouTube. He's everywhere. Subscribe to him. We want to get him over a thousand subs here. He probably is already there since this show, but sub to him. He's got awesome, awesome videos. And finally, uh, Bill Link, uh, always, um, uh, love conversation and he was, uh, the last guy to just really get some good conversations striked up. So what's up, though? Uh, definitely appreciate that. And right now, if you're watching this on YouTube, down below, thumbs up and comment. Anything. Hey, love it. Don't love it. Whatever. Do anything. Comment down below. We pick a winner every single week. We give them $50 store credit for anything in the store or go to any purchase. And we send you a swag bag. That's a shirt, the Ettore pin, all the awesome stuff. So you could be hashtag WCR life and... You can be one of the cool kids. Commenting and uh, tagging and sharing. Be one of the cool kids. Anyway, the show this week is going to be different. A little bit different. I know, starting off, that people are going to send me and talk about this more than any other show because of the way that we're going to convey this. But we're talking about competition. Now, everybody... Even in the most amazing areas, you have competition. Uh, it's just part of what happened. I mean, if you're in an area and there's not anybody around that does any of the same services, then you, my friend, have hit the gold mine. You have the monopoly. Um, awesome for you, but it doesn't happen. I have never met anybody uh, that it's happened to. If it, if it does, comment down below. Like I said, all the time, I'm wrong a lot, so let me know. <laughs> but uh, if you don't have competition, uh, you're basically a, a unicorn everybody else has competition right now there's a few ways everybody's heard the horror story side of competition oh my competition cut my ropes they stole stuff out of my truck they wait till i leave and they go in there and sell the job they do yeah you can be a crappy crappy competitor and you can have crappy crappy competitors if you're not a good person then this show just there's a lot of stuff we're going to talk about that uh, you're just not a good person. But if you are a good person or even can be a good person, then you're going to find some stuff that you really uh, may enjoy. But there are piece of crap people out there, and your competition sometimes is the way. Some people feel like competition is always a negative thing. Like they have to 
always be better and squash you to make themselves look better. And I hate that. Don't make other people look bad to make yourself look good. It just makes you look like a piece of garbage, right? That is what bad competition does. And I hate bad competition. I hate people who do shady things to the competitors just because they feel like that's how it is. Listen, even if they're your en- enemy, what's the number one rule? Your enemy's closer, right? Keep your friends close, your enemy's closer. That's what you got to do. But you can still be a decent human being. You, you just can You know there's enough glass for everybody. And yeah, would you like it all? Sure. It may get to that point. But you don't need to step on toes or be an asshole to the guys and gals around you. You just don't. So I have always been good to competition. I'm thinking, I mean, everybody that I know, I've tried to really, really, really reach out to them. If I find a new guys in the area, I would invite them down to my shop and my offices and just say, hey, what's up, man? Let's let's talk. Let's walk around. I'll show you everything I got, man. Transparency. Check it all out. Now, I did have one guy one time. We had a board, a floater board with all the um, um, floater jobs. I've talked about this before, but uh, gutter cleaning and um, outs only and other jobs that nobody has to be home. We can put them anywhere in and fill the spaces. It keeps a nice full schedule. And I, uh, he's talking to me and he's going... And he's, he's reading and like memory, I don't know what he was doing, but he just was super focused on that board. Whatever, dude, look at it all. Like check out my, comp- my, my uh, jobs if you want, you know, shadily follow me in your truck and see what I do. I don't care, right? I'm not chasing the competition. I'm chasing the dream. I want to be who I want to be. And uh, if you're going to be a piece of garbage, be a piece of garbage. But other than that, everybody's been super, super kind. And, um... I want to get I want to get a story out there. This is 100 100% true. I had a guy. I met him in the town over. We did some work there and I've always seen him work and he was a one man show and he'd work. I knew his name. Hey, what's going on, man? Stop. Say hi to him. Always say hi and I keep saying, "Hey, let's go to lunch sometime, man. I just want to, you know, talk, you know. I just want to talk shop, you know, whatever." And finally, one day, he says, "Hey, I'm going to be in your area." Mind if I stop by? I said, yeah, man, it's always open invitation. I'll be there at this time or this time. He shows up and I walk him to the shop and this is no joke, no exaggeration. He's mind blown. Okay. We had a shop and trucks and that type of thing. And we have, you know, a, a store and uh, all of our equipment sitting out. I mean, you could see it was uh, a nice operation, but even in a small one guy, I, I didn't expect this to happen. But what he said to me was, uh, he says, I, I don't know how I could ever compete against you. I said, ah, it's not a competition, man. I just want to be friends. And, you know, if you ever have a job that you need help with or I need help with or vice versa, that we can be there for each other. And why be enemies when we can be friends? He goes, no, no. He says, man, I don't know how you're doing it. He says, but uh, there's no money in window cleaning. I said, oh, well, uh, I beg to differ, but ha, 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 okay. He goes, listen. He says, I also do lawn care. I, I don't want to do these windows. I want to compete against you. I'm never going to grow my business. He says, I just want to give you my window cleaning company, basically. I want to keep my equipment. I just want to give you all my customers. I said, oh, man, yeah, we, we can do uh, uh, percentage or whatever, you know, if that's really what you want to do. He goes, ah, no, I don't even want that. He says, just take it all. Take the whole list. Just deal with them. Make sure that they're happy. I just want them happy. Literally. Talked to the guy, brought him in, showed him, he gave me his company. Now, it wasn't big. Don't don't think that this was just giant, giant company. But it was a nice little route that uh, we added an entire four days a week worth of route work um, for uh, one guy. So, <laughs> this was all just being nice. I didn't want that. But it happened to be that way. That may not happen. But I want to say and re- reiterate the fact that you can be friends with your competition. And bring them in, talk to them, talk shop, that kind of thing. Now... That's not always going to happen, but being cordial is the best way to go. If you have enemies out there or people who are competing against you, be friends with them. Listen, there's enough stuff out there. You're going to get into a job where maybe you can't handle it, or better yet, they're going to get into a job that they maybe they can't handle, right? Uh, how many times have you heard, ah, oh, man, we're just so busy right now, man, I, I can't even take this new work. Well, here's the thing. Let us take that work, that job that you can't handle, it's too big for you. We'll give you 25% of it right? Whatever your signer's, finer's fee is. 
and we'll take care of it, right? That works back and forth all the time. I've had competition with me on jobs. Man, I had two guys uh, get in a car accident. Like, dude, I-, I need help, man. Is there any way we're doing this giant job? Is there any way, man? It's Is there any way? Yeah, hey, yeah, not a problem, man. I'm free. Uh, I got route work I'm pushing around anyway. Oh, dude, that's awesome. Put him in a lift, work for a day, pay him in cash. He got to work, we got to talk. You know, that's that's an amazing working relationship. Just think, if you were ever lucky enough to go to any of these shows, right? The huge convention, the best one out there. Or ICE, which is coming up, which I'll be at there in uh, Las Vegas. That's coming up in February, I believe. Um, But if you've gone to any of these shows, you can go up to anybody and talk shop with them. And they don't, they're not assholes, right? Why? Is because everybody's on this neutral. It's like bringing a dog to a dog park, right? If you can bring a dog to a dog park, then... Uh, there's nobody owns a dog park. The dogs don't feel like that and they all play. No, dogs usually don't fight. It's the same thing at these conventions. Why can't it be the same in your area, right? If you can be friendly with these, you can really, really earn. And I have not only used people for help and hopefully helped them get them some money, I've borrowed equipment from competitors. I've borrowed out equipment to competitors. I have um, gotten huge, huge jobs from competitors. Um, I have let them work for me. I have trained them on certain services. Listen, you're not making them better than you because you're already there, right? But what you can do is smarten up your industry in your area. If you train your guys right, right price, right whatever, all that, then you're not going to dumb down the market. I got a guy now in my area, now, who, again, I've talked about this, but he thinks I'm sabotaging. I don't care, man. I don't give two dumps about you. I really, really don't. But he spams every group that he's in that I'm part of in the neighborhood and that type of thing. And it drives everybody crazy. The guy just turns everybody away. Listen, when something like that's out there, I've tried to be friends, right? I've tried to talk, but he's just one of those angry competitors that will never talk to me. That's cool, man. Do your own thing. But he is a huge lowballer. Huge lowballer. I mean, he is 40... 30 to 40% of our our price. That's crazy, right? You've seen those signs out there. House washing starting. House washing $89, two-story house. Driveway is $25, right? If those guys are out there doing that, they're killing the market, man. It, it makes it so much harder for somebody like you and the rest of the guys who are all pretty comparable price-wise to come in and say, hey, I would love to explain to you why I am worth this much money. But it's damn hard to tell somebody I'm worth three times more money. It's very, very hard. We go, well, don't you do the same thing? Well, yes, but we're insured and we're this and we're that. And I'm going to be at your house for a heck of a lot less. That's the other thing. This guy is at houses for an entire day charging a third of what I charge. So it's very hard. If you can get everybody on there at least charging semi-same, then you can go ahead and sell. I've been on jobs. I've been on giant proposal projects where... It is four hours of walking all the properties with my competitors. We're all bidding the same thing. Just talking about the job. Ah, man, this is going to suck. Oh, he says, ah, I'm going to probably bring a topin lift in here. Really? Oh, man, that's awesome. Yeah, if I get that, if if I end up landing this job, then uh, maybe we'll talk about that topin lift thing. Oh, yeah, dude, we'll rent it out to you or you need guys in the lift or whatever. We'll see if we get some time. We'll come in and do that. Like, right, we're both putting in our project, our, our projects, we're both putting in our bids. We know we're semi-close on the pr- proposal. Our numbers, we may not talk numbers, right? But we're there to help each other. It's just amazing to have that kind of connection with your competitors when most of the time competitors are a-holes. The other thing is when you go up to somebody and you see them on the street and they're doing that job and you want to talk to them, keep in mind, they're still competitors, right? When you go up to a random guy, go, hey, how are you? They think you're so, oh yeah, how are you? Good, good. Hey, my name is Jersey. I actually own uh, XYZ company here in town. They go, oh, yeah, hey. It instantly changes. What are you doing? You're looking at the job. Oh, you see the job. It's very hard to kind of break into that. So neutral areas are very easy to help soften that, but it's very hard. You have to understand there's a difference between a working friendship and a friendship, friendship, right? There's lines, and there will always be lines because you always want to have a good company. You're never going to like somebody so much as a friend that 
you're going to allow your company to go down because of them. So everybody's trying to still be something, but you can still be friends on that side. You don't have to tell everybody, each other, everything, right? But it's amazing to have kind of uh, somebody that's close that you can kind of bounce things off of and talk and, and that. So, uh, But with uh, competitors, there's a few things that you do need to know about them. Again, knowing the relationship is still business, and friendship you need to know what they're doing not to copy them not to do anything but what you need to do is understand what their strategy is okay with this being said now here's where the angry stuff comes in well if you're friends with them why are you tracking what they do why are you trying to find like you're shady you're trying to pretend to be friends when you're not friends listen i will be friends with everybody who wants to be friends with me i'm completely okay with that but there's a few things. As a competitor, I want to know what their strategy is so that A, we're not barking up the same trees 100%, right? All you're doing then is trying to emulate somebody who's doing the same thing and just making it harder on yourself. So if I know that my competitor, good old, you know, Steve Smith, right? Good guy, but he is a route guy. He focuses all on uh, route and he wants to do it. This is his price and he's always here and he's, he, he talks about him being the route guy. I'm still going to get route. But I'm going to know that I'm not going to put myself as the route guy. Because he's doing that, I'm not going to just instantly have a 100% identical market to them. So I need to know what he's doing to differentiate myself, right? What's your USP? What's your unique selling point? If it is that you are the best, biggest route guy in the, then the next guy's hopefully not going to be the biggest, best route guy in the area because all you're doing is just bashing heads and making it so much harder. So emulation's not a good thing. But knowing what their strategy is, is how they're running business, it's just as good as knowing their strategy and uh, what they're marketing for their businesses, right? If they do EDDM and that is their main focus and they are in mailboxes every single week, maybe you don't track that side of things, right? Maybe you don't go as hard on EDDM in that area. If you know that their line is the top of your county, they go south, maybe you go north of that with EDM, right? Knowing what they're doing doesn't necessarily make it so that you're shady or going underneath them, is that you're not butting heads. You're making it a little bit smoother. You should do this with all your competition if you're friendly or not. You should know what they're doing because you can tell what path you're going on, if your unique selling point is actually unique or not. USP, unique selling point, right? So knowing what they're doing and how they're getting there and what they're marketing is hugely valuable. It's the same thing with web presence. I know guys who have zero web presence. That's the same angel fire website forever. What am I going to do? I'm going to be the biggest, best website up there because I know I can rank amazingly. I know it's going to be an easier time. I know with my web presence, if they look at three websites, then mine is going to blow everybody is out of the water. I know I'm going to get the work from that one. If they're lacking in an area, that's where you focus on, right? They go in and they their biggest thing about themselves is all their friends. I don't even need to advertise because I'm like, well, when the next person goes, oh, wow, you're so big, you don't even need to advertise. Oh, no, actually, you know, we run this completely as a company. We're always advertising. We're always... That's the way that they took. I'm not taking the same path as them because I could get better results in a separate path. But I have to know what they're doing. I have to know their web presence to do that. Focus on the web. That's marketing. I need to know their marketing to know what I can market. Again, if somebody else has never done EDDM, the other guys are never doing EDDM, what should you do? EDDM, right? Because you are the one that's going to be taking that, that piece of the cake. There's enough slices you just have to find what slice you're able to take the easiest, the most efficiently. And when you're putting money into marketing, marketing's expensive. You know, when you're spending 10 grand a month on marketing, you need to yield some dang results as far as specifics. You need to know where that focus is and where you're able to spend the least amount of money or get the best ROI in your money. If everybody, five of your competitors is doing EDDM and you do EDDM, I mean, you're in a flooded area of marketing. It's not even worth doing that, right? It may be worth trying different things before you go and spend a bunch of money in EDM, but you need to know what the other guys are doing to do the same thing. Um, it's the same thing in 
uh, racing, if you watch racing, the guys that take a certain path, they could follow for so long, but that one car is always going to be in front until the other car takes a different path. Then all of a sudden, you're passing the other guy because you're not following them. You're taking your own path. It's the same kind of concept. You need to know what they're doing to be able to, A, not emulate it, and B, take your path. You need to do that. The big thing that people forget in uh, competitor relationships, the hardest part, I would say, is to truly help, to, to really be a friend and help. Because here's the thing, in the back of your head, you're always going to assume